Football is a religion, and it's one that brings people together. Every week, come rain or shine, we go to Dean Court and cheer on our idols, wanting to see them win, perform and score goals. Most of us don't know the players in person, we just love them because they wear the shirt. And when a new player enters the fold, every fan greets them with open arms, always excited when they walk onto the hallowed turf, awaiting that moment when they kiss the badge. But some people inside the stadium do know them, their friends, their families, and their close relations. We were lucky enough recently to speak to Jay-Z's brother after that worldie of a performance against Barnsley, and the pride was hugely evident. So what on earth must it be like to see a brother a friend or a cousin or even a son performs so well on the pitch. Well, in this video, we find out. Cherry's transfer business in recent years has been decent, with not many players who could be labelled a flop. Sometimes we've signed players that have hit the ground running straight away, but other times we've had players that have grown into their role. Sometimes the reason for a slow start might be that the player is being played out of position or that the manager doesn't best know how to utilise them. But then someone will come in and have a eureka moment and put the jigsaw pieces together properly, finally realising the optimum position for each of his stars. One such player that could possibly be labelled as a slow burner is Phil Billing. He came from recently relegated Huddersfield and joined the Cherries in a season where everything seemed to go wrong. Whilst he picked up a Player of the Month award at the start, he, just like the rest of the squad, seemed to fall by the wayside as Boscombe was struggling to cope and with a tired Eddie Howe, the writing seemed on the wall and Bournemouth lost their top flight status. With a second relegation to his name, it would be easy for a player to want to jump ship and whilst many players might have considered moves away, some of them chose to stick to the plan. And whilst a couple of managerial stop gaps managed to secure playoff football last time round, ultimately Bournemouth fell short. So surely this close season would have been the time to go, right? Well, for some, yes. But for others, despite being linked to moves elsewhere, they stuck to the task forged a new relationship with the incoming manager and have thrived, which means they're happy, fans are happy, and also their family are happy. But what's it like being the parent of a player that's overcome the tough times to stick it out and then go on to tear it up in one of the most popular leagues in the world? What's it like to see your son getting criticism? Is it hard to bite their tongue? And what must they feel when the crowd is singing his name and loving every minute of seeing him in action? Does he get a grasp of how his son feels and how much input does he have? In this video, we find out as Jeff Hayward sat down with the father of our Danish midfield maestro in a conversation with Mark Billing. Right, here we are then. Mark, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, and Jeff. thanks for calling. No, excellent. We're all really interested to hear about what you think about Philip's form for AFC Bournemouth at the moment. But but first of all, I just want to wind back to, to Phil as a young boy. As a parent, you obviously want your son to do as well as possible on the pitch. But at what stage did you think Phil really had the potential to make it big? Oh, that's a tough question. I think... I did back in the time when he was five years old, I, I, I saw a football match with him. And then he said, when I grow up, I want to be a professional football player. And I said to him, ah, yeah, but you need to sort out your school first and uh, let's see how it's how it's going to go. And uh, he said, no, I'm going to be a professional football player. Okay. And that, and that on that matter, I said, okay, so then let's make a contract. And I wrote down when Philip Billing grow, grows up and uh, becomes a football player, what did uh, what, what what are you getting your dad then? Oh my, you're gonna get a, a red sports car, okay, nice. <laughs> and what about mom? Yeah, she's gonna get a dress with uh, flowers on. <laughs> Five years old, and uh, I still got the contract. So, question so, is, though, have, have you got the car? Have you got the sports car? No, not yet. Get? No. No, <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> so I, I think at, at that point, um, we are living next together, uh, together, 
just the opposite side of a training ground and and we 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 went there all the time they climbed the fence and played the football over there and uh, he played in a cl club called Jane at that point and i could see as a former football player i could see this coach he couldn't he couldn't get him anywhere so i took him to the local club it was esberg uh, uh, and 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 Took him in there and and could see he's got potential. So I think it's just it's just it, it came along as he grew up, but he was always uh, determined on it because when he uh, went to seventh grade, they can go to a, a another school where where they're educated in in the school, of course, but at the same time in football. And when he started there, he he went up uh, like six in the morning uh, and took his uh, bicycle out there. So he was really really determined to to get something out of uh, the school and and his football. So and um, and what was it? Was it the 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 touch that he had with his left foot? Was that was that something really natural for him at, even at an early age? Yeah, you know it was quite difficult because when he was I was a former uh, ice hockey player as well. And he played ice hockey as well because he he uh, rode around when he was 15, uh, fifth, five years old. He he um, skated around in my roller skates, and they were too big for his uh, uh, small feet. So so I bought him uh, some uh, roller blades and and thought, okay, my he's got a good uh, uh, what do you got uh, what do you call it balance, uh, balance. balance. yeah balance yeah. And uh, took him to to ice skating uh, to ice hockey as well. And uh, at some point when he was seven, eight years old, we have to choose either football or ice hockey. And uh, uh, good for him. It, it turns out to be football because. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was. Um, he was really determined to to get something out of of what he's uh, what he's capable to do. And uh, and and we trained uh, with the left foot. It was it was like yeah it was it was just meant to be the left foot because uh, on the other side we we trained with his right foot as well so he could be uh, when we went to the field over here to try to pass me with the with your right foot as well so so we did a lot of practice so so but but the left foot was obvious his his good foot always special and and when you when he was growing up who did he have as his idol who did he really aspire to be like as a football player apart from his dad obviously <laughs> um I th he said he, he was a great arsenal fan and i think uh Thierry Henry was was uh, his big idol at that time uh, he never saw saw a game Whenever there was a game here in Esberg, uh, the local football, and there was an English uh, game on, he always saw the English game. He didn't care about the, the Danish league. So he always, uh, he if, if, he, if I had any questions about some players in England, I would always ask him. He knew it. He knew all the questions for that. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And here's another question for you. At what age did he overtake you height-wise? Oh, 16 16 wow. i think wow yeah he wow. was uh he was big he was uh i think i got a picture so how tall are you mark actually i should ask that question for uh, one, there, one eight five something like that this is back in 15. oh wow oh <laughs> wow he's got he's got a nathan ake cut there as well by the looks yeah. of things <laughs> exactly yeah Wow, fifteen. Yeah, that's Un yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It is unbelievable. So, so tell us about the early part of his career because he got picked up by Huddersfield when he was what seventeen years old. Is that right? Yeah, sixteen and a half. Yeah. So, how did that all come about, and how did you feel about that at the time? Um, we went to a tryout in December twelfth for ten days in Huddersfield. Uh, five guys from four guys from Esberg and one from Aarhus. Uh, two under 16s, two no, four guys, two under 16, no, two under 17s, and two under 19s. And went there for 10 days. And, and when 
we hit the ninth day or so they came and say okay we want philip in uh, in january and this uh, was mid december so i said what that's so I, time. yeah i had to tell his mother that <laughs> he's gonna move to england and there was um yeah she was understandable she, she she was into it as well because she knew that that was his call that, that was what he wanted to do just play football but we had some we had some uh what do you call it uh, uh difficulties because he was not that good in school he was not that good in in, in language and stuff like that and i think it's the first year and a half or uh, something like that they call him the one-liner in uh, in Huddersfield. <laughs> yeah but but he he really amazed me and 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 could adapt to that life so quickly that was yeah that was, i was really proud there because we didn't we, we tried to call him all the time and he said back uh, right back at us he said if anything happens i'm gonna call you yeah but we need to we need to know are you good and yeah as long as i'm not calling you i'm good oh, okay but you're only 17 years at, at that time so so it, it was uh, it was difficult to to let him go and, and did so, huddersfield have a a scout who was close to esberg or a yeah. danish kind of expert in the area yeah um Philip's former, the first uh, agent he had, um, had a contact, uh, a Scottish guy. He came in with a guy called Ross Wilson, and these guys know uh, know know each other. And 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 he called uh, because when there was a local guy in uh, in Huddersfield that bought Huddersfield uh, Town Football Club, yeah, and. Uh, they brought in a, a new uh, sport, sports director and he had his own uh, scout with him. And this scout, Alan, called Philip's agent to say, can I come to Denmark to see uh, the first division and uh, the Super League and stuff like that? So yeah, no worries, come over. And he went, he was here for uh, like a week or something like that. They drove around in, in, uh, in Denmark to see some football matches. and. Uh, he has to go back on a Sunday, and and Philip's agent he said to Alan, "Ah, hey, you have to come and uh, and look at the under seventeen match in 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 Esberg. He said, "No, I haven't done any research, so no, no, that doesn't matter." So they went out there, and I think they had played ten minutes or something like that. He said, um, "What about this guy? Does he have a contract?" "No." Nope. "What about this guy?" "No, nope. no contract." serious okay uh, i want to see this guy and this guy philip and and, and a guy called victor in uh, for a tryout in uh, in 12 in in Hotfield. so that was that was how it's it, it gets started everything gets started there and how did he settle in because it, i mean his career really took off quite quickly from the youth level up to playing for the first team it was quite a quite a quick rise wasn't it for him it was it was but but it seems like he always had his uh, feet planted in the in the ground that he, he was not he was not on high level he's just uh, at this at the first and um throughout his his uh, youth career he was not that uh, good at uh, scoring goal he, he he scored goal but the the what do you call it um when he scored a goal uh all that tension or all mm. that he, he didn't he didn't fancy that he didn't oh, fancy okay. that. He, he just wants to play football uh yeah. not get all that attention and stuff like that so it, it was it was it was quite hard to see that sometimes he'd rather put the ball back um, instead of sh shooting himself and stuff like that so so yeah it it uh but it was it was funny to follow and and at that time i i think i went to uk five six times a year to see how he was doing and, and see obvious go to the stadium see no matches 
And and what did you see in him that was changing, that was improving? Oh, uh, he he was gaining weight for uh, for the first, and and then uh, it was more it was more professional, uh, and and his, his skills took uh, took a huge leap uh, the right way because it was a fantastic uh, setup in Huddersfield comparing to Esberg obviously so so it was the, um and 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 his uh, dedication he was uh, very dedicated to to what he what he was doing over there so it was nice and were you there for that game on the 1st of september 2018 when he scored his first premier league goal for huddersfield uh, can i remember that which one was i that? think it was against everton Oh yeah, yeah. No, I was not there. I was here. Oh, yeah. But were you watching every game from uh, from Denmark at the time? Every game, every so game. How, did, how it, did you feel when he when he scored in that game? Uh, proud as hell. <laughs> proud. Um, it was. It was. Um, yeah, you will always have liked to be there when he's when he came in the first time and and. When he had the first uh, start in the the eleventh, and uh, and I've got uh, obviously his his first goal, but you, you can never predict when that's going to happen. So, it uh, I, I I've watched every game that he's uh, participating in. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. And and I'm interested to know. I'm sure other fans would be as well of of how involved you get when he when he does move clubs because obviously when Huddersfield got relegated the move to to Bournemouth came up so how how much did he talk to you about that how did how did you advise him um yeah uh, when 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 now he's 25 now and he's uh, he's a uh, grown up now but but in his early days, I I, was, I, I did support him uh, the best way I could, um, and 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 he took advices. But but you know he has some agents and and uh, they did some things uh, that I say that's not good to do that. But when when you got that distance, there's nothing you can do. So. So I tried to to give him so much of, uh, so much information that I could over the phone or Twitter or whatever. So so it's, it's what, difficult to be on on. Sure, sure. But what what did you think of Bournemouth as a as a as a club to move on from at the, at the time? Ah, uh, at that time I I didn't uh, I didn't knew Bournemouth that well uh, seen them play in Premier League of course and and I went in and look at the uh, at, at the um, uh, what do you call it the backtrack the the, the the Premier League track yeah yeah and so they've done good in five years and they're a good 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 uh, good team uh, and and played some uh Really good football. So said, I'm. I'm not scared of you going to Bournemouth and it's south. Uh, it's better than rainy Yorkshire. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right. Quite yeah. right. Quite right. And and he started well um, in his career with us. Uh, he was Player of the Month for August, but um, our season went downhill. It was it was tough for us. I'm sure it's tough for for the players. How was it for a parent of the players? Or a parent of the player, as you were, to to actually watch that season. Phil was part of that team that just we just got stuck in a, a relegation battle from from about November onwards. Yeah, exactly. It's it uh, taking consider that he went down, he did relegate with with Huddersfield. It was not funny to see him on a team that struggled in 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 the bottom as well. Uh, the team was too good to play in the button for the but because it was it was uh, when Bournemouth played that season they always played like um, 
it's what do you call it? It's 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 really football that you um, like to see, if you understand me. Yeah. It's not it's not it's not boring football. It's it's attacking football and and it's it's uh, it's it's seaworthy, really seaworthy. And and but they had some they had some major the troop the 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 the, the, the troop is small and you don't have uh player to player uh, that can if if uh, someone is um injured you you don't have the same capacity to, to put in and say okay you, you you're gonna do the same that steve cook example uh when he got injured that, that were, you could see that on the team because he was he was solid as a rock and they they lost some stupid games uh to the bottom teams and so it was um it was it was tough to see and i was really sad when they went down really really sad and and does he share his frustrations with you or does he keep himself to himself pretty much uh nah, some some of them came to the to the surface of course because it it's uh, i think it's natural that that, that you, you don't fancy to to play in the bottom of the league it's not you can see now that you're on top uh, everybody's smiling everybody has fun with with playing and that's of course you you need need to take when when you are performing and when you are top of the league and you need to to get yourself together but it's frustrating when you are when you're in the bottom of the league and you you lose to someone that you obviously should have won up uh, over so it's it's yeah i can see the frustration i can see it i can see when he's not happy i can see it on the field it's so easy for me to see uh, and of course that season it was really difficult because i felt he was really contributing when we when we played uh, those two games aston villa and brighton mm -hmm. and then then our kind of he i mean he scored a fantastic goal in that villa game um then the the pandemic hit and they were playing suddenly playing later in the season to with nine games to to play in front of uh, no fans and it was all very strange so yeah. that must have been very difficult for for everyone to adapt to mm. it was it was it was not and and when you sat home you can hear you can hear what the the players on the fields was talking about and it's not normal you, you're not supposed to do that you, yeah. you really need the the spectators every time it, it's yeah. it's the especially at home it's the 12th the guy on the field and it's it's you need the the spectators that's the, it's going to give you a lift every time i think i think because of, of phil's height his skill and and his athleticism it, it it's quite difficult i think for coaches to actually feel that they know what his ideal position is and and certainly he's played in a variety of uh, of positions do you, do you mm. think the coaches that he's worked for necessarily understand his game as as well as perhaps scott parker is at the moment <sighs> that's a tough question um sometimes when i see a match uh i i look with the dad goggles on every time I, i'm more criticism uh, than obviously all of the others to see him on the field so so i sometimes it's, it's, why why are you doing this but you don't know what he's got told from the from the from the gaffer uh what, what he's supposed to do because at that height he has i'll i'll uh, i don't I, I don't understand why he is not banging tin with his head every year <laughs> i don't, really don't understand it and and if i was a coach i'll i'll teach him to do that yeah every, every day after training just balls in the area and uh, do some head shots and stuff like that yeah. but but I think Philip is a very tactical player, uh, despite of his height, because he, he looks like, uh, you know, he's not hanging together sometimes. But 
but his, uh, I, I can see that every time he gets the ball, he always know you know, there's a guy over here. He's 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 running for it, and you can put it there or, or stuff like that. So, so it's very tactical in in in, in my point of view. Um, but sometimes uh, he looks lazy. But even though he probably run, run uh, ten kilometers in a in a in a match, but he looks lazy. But that that, that just the way he is not that he is lazy on the contrary i'll say i think he's the definition there's an english word for it languid is yeah the phrase. exactly yeah and that that to me sums him up and i think i think a lot of a lot of the fans certainly in the the uh the first season he was with us and perhaps a bit last season we could see that the way the position he was being played i mean he's been played defensive midfield which i don't think is his right position um He's he's been played sort of just as a stopper almost, you mm. know, just breaking up the play. And again, he's far more creative than that. But but it seems this season that he's really got the the, the space and the players around him to to get the best out of him. And it's 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 fantastic to watch. I do wonder whether you've ever thought about saying to him, "Look, Phil, you know, as a dad does say to their kids, you know, mm. every time you score with your head, I'm going to give you some extra money, pocket yeah. money, maybe." <laughs> Yeah, I did that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, since he was him and uh, another guy has, has always been the big guys on the the, the team, and they have always been used for, as box to box player, back and forth, back and forth all the time. And uh, obviously, I told him hundred times, I'll give you. 10 crowns, 100 crowns, if you, <laughs> if you do it with your head. But as he said, um, he's not that comfortable with his head because he um, he don't know where it's going to go when he goes up. Uh, in my career, I have made a lot and lots uh, with my head. But I, I really try to... to, uh, to Get Philip to focus on that, but but it's, I, I think not, it's not doable. Well, we'll we'll see if we can get a collection, a, a whip round from the back of the net audience, and see if we can get him to score with his head this season. Yeah, that'd be lovely. So, how <laughs> often do you get to see him play now? Are you are you uh, able to come over to to the UK to Bournemouth uh, and watch him play? Yeah, uh, due to the the COVID, I haven't been there. So, but I'm coming to uh, to the Huddersfield game. Uh, two weeks from now, so uh, I'm, I'm going to come and enjoy that. Uh, I've been um, I've been invited to the Executive Lounge or something like that uh, by uh, Steve Butler. Excellent, yeah. excellent! So, what a great game to go to as well for the uh, for the connections you must have with uh, Huddersfield still. Exactly, yeah. I, I still uh, write with some of the, the Hotterfield fans and uh, met up with them in Austria when they went to, uh, to, to on a training trip there when he played in Hotterfield. So, so they're, they're, especially one of the guys, he uh, he's, he's always writing me and uh, wishing me, uh, Philip, a good game and I'll obviously wish them back. So we, we don't have any... I I like Huddersfield as a as a as a club. Good, good, really. good, good. And um and how much is Phil enjoying his football this season? It seems that he's really gelled with Jay Z and Jaden on that left hand side, yeah. and they they they're playing playing teams off the park this season. Yeah, he's really enjoying himself. Uh, I can see it every time he plays. He's playing with with confidence, and uh, he's um. I mean, he, he's he he's happy. It's 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 so clearly to see. He's very happy when he plays. So it's it's nice to see. What's what's been his favorite AFCB goal or favorite AFCB moment so far? I think it's going to be when uh, they go up to the Premier League. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> what we want to hear. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> uh, there's been there's been a lot. There's been a lot. So. 
I, I can't take one out and say that's that's and the main thing is that he's enjoying himself. That's yeah. that's the that's that's the that's the main thing for me to see that he's enjoying himself. And and do you do do the family all get together to watch him play? I mean, how do you celebrate his goals when he scores and all that yeah, kind of thing? What's it like? Yeah, yeah. Of course, we are all over there so when when he scores. But we are all over there when Bournemouth scores. Uh, uh, no, no, no matter who scores. So, but obviously, you get some extra tension uh, when Philip scores. Uh, scores, of course. And what would be the best piece of advice you'd ever given him? <sighs> um, I think it's uh, no matter what you do in life, be happy with it. Yeah. Be happy with the things you do. I think that's the that's the that's the biggest best advice I gave him. And. Uh one of the one of the tough things for footballers, I'm I'm I mean, I'm sure um, you've seen this as well with Phil, is that social media reaction, particularly when times are not going well, it, it's quite tough. How how difficult is is it to restrain yourself from not getting involved in some of the stuff that goes on on social media? <laughs> how difficult it is! It's very very difficult because I have I when I see that I. I just have to write back and say, listen, what the beep are you talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah. Because some some of the, you know, all those trolls that sit around their laptops and stuff like that and, and have no clue what they are doing to a person, whether it's racism or whether it's it's whatever. It, it's, it's so harsh. It's so harsh. Um, so it's it's very difficult, but but I have to retain myself and say, okay, uh, I can't do anything about it. So just let it let it pass. But it's it's very difficult, very difficult. Well, let's talk more positive things. I mean, he's he's been capped for Denmark, hasn't he already? And I'm sure you're looking forward to to more appearances for the national team. <sighs> yeah, we're still waiting. What happens on that team? I don't know. I can't believe he's not in the squad already on the form that he's showing this season. No, me neither. Me neither. I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I can say that much. There's not a single uh, national team that ha has a player who's played 80 Premier League games and not is on their national team. I can't find it. Mm. Well, it's it's very frustrating, I, especially for him. It's very frustrating. Well, I'm sure it's not far away. I mean, the 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 squad that we've got at the moment, we've got so many internationals in that squad. Yeah. So I'm sure it'll only be a matter of time. And and if he carries on playing the way he's playing, I'm sure it'll be no time at all. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, and I think I think it'd be fair to say that. Um, the fans and the connection we have with with Phil is now a lot stronger this season, particularly because I think I think we're the fans are now back in the grounds, which I think helps a lot. But but mm. how do, how does Phil see his relationship with the supporters? How that's changed? Hmm. Oh, that's a difficult question. Uh, uh, I think he's trying to to connect with the fans uh, as much as possible. Um, obviously, as I said to him, uh, since you were 16, 17, when he went to Huddersfield, uh, do yourself a favor and connect with the fans. If you play a shitty game, the fans will still love you because you're not one of those guys just passing by the fans and not say hello to them and kids who wants an uh, autograph or something like that take that 15 minutes and 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 really let them see that that you want though uh, you 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 want want to be a part of this uh, as well so but i think he's 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 coming there but he, he's he's uh, he's a shy and silent type so 
I can, I can understand it's it's quite difficult for him sometimes. Well, he, he's definitely been winning us over. I think the more he plays, and, and um, speaking on behalf of all the fans, I think I think the the performances this season that the team, but also you know he's been instrumental in that has been absolutely fantastic, and, and we we just. Uh, we just can't wait to see him get 20, 30 goals this season. So, uh, and half of those with his head. So, <laughs> yeah. please pass that on to him if you if you get, do get to see him. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And um, thanks so much for your time, Mark. It's been a privilege to talk with you. I think we, I think we get some real insights there into what it's like being a being a dad mm. um, of a Premier League player. And uh, hopefully, we'll be back there as a Premier League player very soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed again. <laughs> Great stuff. Up the cherries. Yeah, up the cherries. <laughs>